My oldest girl, Chrissy, is married to Al Toledo, who is the pastor of Chicago Tabernacle in Chicago. And they're doing a great job. And so my daughter is involved in leadership and, 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 her, and my son-in-law there is involved in that. And their oldest daughter is, my fir first granddaughter is Susan Joy. And Susie is here tonight, and she married, oh wait, she married a preacher. And wait, he's here tonight, and his name is Pastor Josh LeBlanc, L-E-B-L-A-N-C, much more refined and elegant than Cymbala, <laughs> LeBlanc. And Carol, aren't we proud? Carol, are we proud? You know, I looked out at her and, I, and saw him and I just, I get weak because God is so good. How many just cry sometimes how God is so good to us? So, um, so my son James is serving the Lord, sings in the choir. Pastor Brian, obviously, amazing man of God. My daughter Sue is a, is a, a, a tornado for the Lord. And... Um, so, on top of that, Pastor Josh and Sue have two little boys who are my great-grandchildren. And they are serving the Lord, although they didn't want to come to the meeting tonight. <laughs> They're up on the fifth floor with, uh, with Charlotte and my assistant Nina's daughter, Anna Grace. They are having their own service of some kind up there. I hope. If you hear a lot of noise, you know what's going on. But I'm so, I'm so thankful. From one generation to another. Come on, can we thank God? So, Josh and Sue left Chicago, uh, how long ago, brother? A year and a half ago, and planted a new church. I like the name, Philadelphia Tabernacle. How many like that name? That's a good name. And so they're down, downtown. I'm so thankful. They tell me the stories of some of the people they're running into and who have need because Philadelphia is no joke either. You know that, right? To know that my children are doing, my grandchildren are doing the work of the Lord doors open to everyone. I'm so proud. Could you welcome, come on, Pastor Josh LeBlanc is in the house. Praise the Lord. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. A lot of, a lot of pressure to live up to with that introduction, and the last name. Um, it is truly a joy and an honor to to be here tonight and to, to open the Word of God with all of you. I, uh, I bring greetings from your brothers and sisters in Philadelphia and, and in Chicago. I, I love that in the family of God, it doesn't matter where we are in the natural. We are united spiritually. Come on, let's praise God for that. I, I also love the fact that tonight... In Brooklyn, there's a group of us here praying, believing, we are holding hands, we are praying over those requests because we believe that God answers prayer. How many believe that God answers prayer? And I love the fact that there's a group of people in Chicago tonight getting ready to gather and pray at the Tuesday night prayer meeting at the Chicago Tabernacle because they believe that God answers prayer. And there's a group of People in Philadelphia right now gathering together because they believe that God answers prayer. I mean, come on, believe that God answers prayer. <laughs> prayer is this beautiful, amazing thing, this mixture of our faith and God's power. And I would be remiss to just take just a quick moment to acknowledge the faith of a couple individuals who 
each and every one of us have been impacted by. The faith of Pastor Simla and Miss Carol and the way that they have faithfully led and faithfully believing that time after time, obstacle after obstacle, miracle after a miracle, they have faithfully prayed and with faith they have believed that God answers prayer. Come on, come on, let's give it up for Pastor Simba and Miss Carol. And as Pastor Simba mentioned, we are in Philadelphia and uh, we have we have seen God do some just remarkable things in our midst. We have seen people growing in God. We've been seeing people, marriages restored. People are getting saved. People are getting baptized. People are becoming, growing deeper and deeper and deeper in God. And I, I want to share a quick story before we dive into the Word. It's going to be a, a little springboard for us as we, as we open up the Word tonight. And it, there's a gentleman in the church, his name is his name's Todd. And Todd gave his heart to the Lord a little over two years ago. Todd was, uh, he's a very, very sharp man. He's got a great job and a very clear head on his shoulders. And he, about 12 weeks ago, he lost his job. And it was one of those things that he didn't see coming. It, the, his, the rug got pulled from underneath him. And he, he called me just, couple hours after it happened, he said, Pastor Josh, I, 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 I did not see this coming. I had no idea this was happening. How, how am I going to do this? How am I going to provide for my family? The insurance, it goes out in a couple weeks. I don't know what's going to happen. How am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? And after a few moments of talking, he said, you know what? I know God's in control. He said, I, I don't know what's happening. I don't know why God is doing this. I'm not sure why I lost my job, even though I'm growing in God, even though I'm doing the things he asked me to do. I lost my job and I'm, I'm confused. I'm embarrassed. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. But you know what? I believe that God is going to help me through this situation. And it's such a testimony and it's such an encouragement to me to see Todd, who is growing in his relationship with the Lord, to say, you know what? It doesn't matter what's going on around me. I know that God is in control. And, and in a lot of ways, I know some of us can identify with, with Todd's story. Praise the Lord. Just a few weeks ago, Todd found a job and he started working a couple weeks ago. And God is faithful. God is always faithful. But some of us can identify with, with Todd. You know, there. It might have a different flavor. Some of us might be, uh, be without a job right now. Some of us might be feeling the pressures of a, a financial strain in our, in, our, in our lives, in our world. Some of us might be feeling the pressures of uh, a relationship challenge. Some of us might be feeling the pressures of, of different obstacles in our lives. Some of us might be feeling the pressures of, of, of temptation. Some of us might be feeling the pressures of, of things that, that the enemy is throwing after us. And tonight I want to talk about what happens when we feel that pressure. We all feel pressure every once in a while. Some of us are going through pressure right now. Sometimes it's pressure through a life situation like, like Todd or some of you might be facing a similar thing. Sometimes the, the enemy comes at us and throws things in our way and our natural instinct is to is to kind of go like this right you know some of us we feel like we're supposed to just curl up in a ball you know Todd was he called me just to continue the story he called me when he called me he said you know God's in control and I know that God's working in my life because my propensity if this would have happened three years ago I would have just shut down. I would have been about three sheets to the wind with alcohol. And I would have just, I would have just given up. But he was resolute. He said, I know that God's in control. And even though the pressure's hit, I know that there is victory. There's something that God has for me. And tonight, my brothers and sisters, I want to talk about having victory under pressure. God has called us to have victory under pressure. And, and you guys, you guys ever, you guys ever heard of a roly poly? Anyone ever heard of a roly poly? 
Okay, some of you, there might be, they call, they're called like pill bugs or something like that. But I love the roly polies. Growing up, I would, I would play with them. Anyone play with the roly polies when they were, yeah. You can, it's okay, you can raise your hand. It's fun. And what, what happens with roly polies is you, they, they sense something going on around them. They sense a, 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 an attack. They sense pressure. They sense something happening. It could be a blade of grass. It could be a stick or whatever. And what do they do? They shrivel up into a ball. They get in their little cocoon and they wait till the pressure's over. And you know, see, the, the devil loves when we take that attitude, when, when we feel pressure in our lives, he loves the fact that sometimes we just sit still because when we're sitting still, we're not moving forward with, in God's plan for our lives. You know, God has a plan for each and every one of us. The book of Jeremiah says that he has plans to prosper us, not to harm us, but to give us a hope and a future. And God has a plan for each and every one of you in this room. Everyone listening online, God has a plan for your life. And the devil loves when we curl up in a little ball when we feel those pressures happen. It might be, like I said, a, a, a lost job or a financial strain. It might be a relationship challenge. And he wants us just to shrivel up and say, I'm just going to stay right here and I'm going to curl up and I'm, I'm going to avoid everyone. I'm going to avoid people. I'm going to avoid what God has for me. I'm going to avoid the teachings of the word. I'm going to avoid everything because it's, it's more safe in my cocoon than out there. But look at Look at what a lion does. See, a lion, you know, the lion is the king of the jungle. And when a lion gets attacked, you know what it does? It doesn't cower back. It doesn't pull back. It doesn't hide in its cave. You know what the lion does? It roars. Oh, you know, a lion roars. And when a lion, when a lion is attacked, its roar can be heard up to five miles away. Tonight, some of us are called to roar. Some of us have been under pressure. Some of there's things that are going on in our lives and we've been clammed up too long. And tonight, some of us need to roar for victory in our lives. Come on, let's put our hands together. And so I want to look at a passage, book of Psalm 118. I'll be on the screen behind me, I believe. Psalm 118, a uh, little trivia fact, is between the shortest chapter in the Bible and the longest chapter in the Bible, Psalm 117 and 119. You guys can thank me for that the next time you guys are on Jeopardy. <laughs> and you need to answer that question. With Psalm 118, most scholars believe, was written in the time of Ezra and Nehemiah when they were rebuilding the temple and the walls of Jerusalem. And during that time, there was a very clear calling and plan and purpose of why they were there. And while they were doing that, there were people all around them trying to pressure them and to, to tell, tell them, oh, you can't do that. They're trying to trick them. They're trying to intimidate them. They're trying to write letters that saying, you can't do this or you can't do that. You can't do this. And the, the, the psalmist writes this beautiful psalm amidst pressure. And as we go through this tonight, I want to encourage you, let's look at this and let's apply it to the areas of our lives that we might feel the pressure. And we're going to talk how God can give us victory under that pressure. Psalm 118, I'm reading out of the Good News Translation, says, Give thanks to the Lord because He is good. How many of you know the Lord is good? And his love is eternal. Let the people of Israel say, his love is eternal. Let the priests of God say, his love is eternal. Let all who worship him say, his love is eternal. And just quick pause. You know, one of the best ways to get out of a pressure-filled situation is to worship the Lord. You know, earlier, Pastor Symbol invited some of us forward as we started worship. And it's such a great way to shake off the day, shake off a tough, tough situation. I want to encourage you, if you are going through a pressure-filled situation, maybe you're feeling the, the pressures of a, an addiction you've been battling with. 
Maybe you're feeling the pressures of a financial situation. You know, a good worship session will do your heart some good. Because you know why we are created to worship the Lord? And when we worship the Lord, it reminds us how big God is and how relatively small our problems are. Come on, let's praise God for that. Verse five, I love this verse. It says, in my distress, some translations say, when I was hard pressed or when I felt hemmed in, when I felt surrounded, when I feel like there's no way out, when I feel like just clamming up in a ball, it says, I called to the Lord. I didn't say, it doesn't say I, I shut down. It doesn't say I stopped and I whined to myself. It didn't say, it doesn't say, you know what? I'm just going to just curl up and I'm going to just sit in my room in misery. No, it says, I called to the Lord. I called to the Lord and he came by when he felt like it. No. He, what? He answered me and he set me free. You know, I love the fact that this is in the past tense. I called to the Lord and he answered me. It means it's already happened before and God can do it again. There's a trick that the devil plays on us. He tries us to forget the faithfulness of God in our lives. He tries to say, you know what? Yeah, he, he, he did that, but this problem is too big. This, 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 this issue is too far gone. There's no way that he can do it. There's no way that he can help you with that, with that relationship that seems to be on the rocks. There's no way that he can help you with, with the financial bind that you're in. There's no way that he can do it. But what we can do is we can say, God, I call to you. You've called me to have victory and I'm calling to you for victory. God, would you help me to have victory in this situation? And when, the, when we cry out to God, what we're doing is we're putting our faith in him, not what's going on around us. We call to God and the promise there is that he will answer us. He will answer us. The, the Psalms 50 said, I love the Psalms, if you can't tell. I love the Psalms. It's, Psalms 50 says, call on me in the day of trouble and I will rescue you. I will. That is a promise that we can take to the bank. When we feel the pressures of life or the pressures of the enemy or the pressures of, of, of growth, whatever it might be, we can call on the name of the Lord and he will answer us. Tonight, some of us need to call on the Lord. Some of us have felt pressure and we've curled up and we tonight, we just need to say, God, I'm calling on you. I'm calling on you. How many of you have ever heard, remember the, the, the show Batman? Okay, I'm not talking about the ones from the last 15 years. I'm talking from, I'm talking about like Adam West Batman. You know, the one where when they change scenes, the bat goes do 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 What happens in Batman? They need help, they pick up the bat phone. Well, guess what? Our God is bigger than Batman. Our God is bigger than Superman. Our God, he will answer us. I've heard it said before that if the devil can't get you to disobey God, he will try to get you to doubt God. And when we call on the name of the Lord, it reminds us of his faithfulness. It reminds us of his goodness. It reminds us of his mercies. It reminds us of the fact that he's picked our feet up and he's placed our feet on solid ground. Called that victory under pressure. Moving on, verse six says, the Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? It is the Lord who helps me and I will see my enemies defeated. It is better to trust in the Lord than to depend on people. It's better to trust in the Lord than to, to, to depend on human leaders. And let me pause and let me just say that this does not mean that we don't trust our leaders. This does not mean that we don't listen to our leaders. What this does mean is that you, each and every one of us, have to have our own dependence on God. Amen. Pastor Simba, the other pastors, they can't have 
dependence on God for you. They can t teach you. They can counsel you. They can pastor you. They can share with you. They can do it. But you have to have that dependence on God for yourself. And so what this section is talking about is the difference between vertical dependence and horizontal dependence. When we depend solely horizontally, we get pulled left and right. When we depend vertically, we get pulled up. God wants to pull some of us up tonight. We call on the Lord. He takes us to a spacious space. Verse 10, I love this. You know, could, could someone play the keys? We're going we're gonna to pray for ourselves here in just a second. It says, many enemies were around me, but I destroyed them by the power of the Lord. I love that. But I destroyed them by the power of the Lord. Many of us have many enemies that face that are around us. You know, this, this psalmist was writing and I'm imagining him looking up and he's seeing the enemies in the fields around him and trying to, trying to dissuade them from doing the work of the Lord. And some of us, God has, God has called each and every one of us to do the work of the Lord. But some of us have gotten swayed where we've looked up and we said, you know what? We can't do it. We're surrounded. We're pressed in. We're feeling the pressure. We can't do it anymore. But tonight... God wants you to destroy your enemies that are surrounding you. Verse 10, it said, my enemies were around me, but I destroyed them by the power of the Lord. They were around me on every side, but I destroyed them by the power of the Lord. They swarmed around me like bees, but they burned out as quickly as brush fire. By the power of the Lord, I destroyed them. Come on, let's give the Lord a shout, shout of praise, hallelujah. Not only, what I love about this, not only do we have access and we can call on the name of the Lord, but when we have the perspective that God wants us to have victory under pressure, when we call onto the name of the Lord, we worship him and we say, God, you have the great victory and we're gonna follow you and we're gonna be led by you. Not only do we have access but we become agents of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We become ambassadors of victory in our own lives and other people's lives around us. We become agents of victory in our homes when there's relationship strife. We become agents at our workplace when there's gossip and backbiting going on. We become agents of victory when we're sitting there and we're saying, God, we don't know how we're gonna pay this bill. What happens is our perspective changes and we're able to say, God, we trust you. And you've called us not just to be passive onlookers, but participate in the victory. There's a woman in the church in Philadelphia. I won't use her name, but she started coming to the church a little over a year ago. She, you can just, I had a brief conversation with her. After, with my first conversation, I could tell things were, things were rough for her. Things at home were not good. She had three boys. And those boys, the first time they came to the church, <laughs> The person that was doing kids that day came to me and said, Pastor Josh, we need some reinforcements. <laughs> you know, we got two boys, Wesley and James. They're nine years old and seven years old and they're rascals themselves. But she had three boys. And you know what? Not only were they just being boys and being kids, but they were in such a tough situation at home that there was so much stirring inside their little hearts that they, they didn't know what else to do but just to act out. And so I talked with this woman and at the church we just began to speak life over her. Just began to speak life over her boys. Began to just say, God has a plan for your life. God loves you. Young man, God loves you. And over time you began to see her shoulders go from like this like this 
and her head to go from like this to like this and her walk going from this to like this. Wait. So Resurrection Sunday this year, all three of her boys gave their heart to Jesus Christ. This woman, you've seen her, I've just seen her grow and blossom into this amazing, amazing woman of God. Still, yes, things to grow in. But it's been amazing seeing the fact that even her own vernacular for herself and for her family has changed. And what's happened is she has received life through words and through those words she has received the perspective that I can call unto the Lord in my day of trouble and he will rescue me and she's called on the day of the Lord and she's brought that victory into her home and now her boys are walking around like young men of faith young men of courage young men believing that even at nine years old God has a plan for their lives God can make us and help us to be agents of victory so let me ask you, as I've been sharing, where are you feeling pressure and what is your response? Is your response to curl up in a ball, to weep, to feel sorry for yourself, to just give up? Some of us maybe, maybe you've been in the Lord for 35, 45 years and you have allowed the enemy to slow you down from the amazing plan that God has for you. Remember the devil, he's okay if you stop as long as you're not moving forward. He doesn't want necessarily to have you fighting on his side. As long as you're not fighting on the Lord's side, he's okay with that. So tonight, some of us, we need to say, God, I need victory in your life, in my life. I need victory. I'm feeling the pressure. I need to be, I'm going to call on you in my distress and you will answer me and you will take me to a free place, a spacious place, a place that I can see your good, pleasing and perfect will for my life. So I'm going to ask if you're here and you've felt that pressure and you've given in and you've curled up spiritually, emotionally, I'm going to give you an opportunity in just a moment to stand up and roar like a lion. You're going to roar like a lion through prayer. You're going to roar like a lion like praying, by praying for your brothers and sisters around you. So if you have allowed those pressures to keep you stuck, I'm going to ask you to take a step of faith and I'm going to ask you just to stand up. If you say, yes, I have allowed pressures around me just to allow me to stay stagnant in the will that God has. People standing up all over. If you said, you know, I, I, I feel like I have not moved forward in the way that God has for me because I have allowed those, the things around me to intimidate me. Would you stand? It's this bold step. So here's what we're going to do in just a moment. We're going we're gonna to pray for you. But one of the first things that I talked about is worship. And we're going to worship the Lord in just a moment. If the singers could come help me. And I, those of you that are sitting right now, I want you to remember those that are standing. Because in a moment, I'm going to have you guys all stand. And we're going to lay hands on those that are standing and we're going to be like one man contending for the faith, locking arms, and we're going to pray for him. But as we sing here tonight, we're going to be reminded of the faithfulness of God. We're going to say, God, I worship you. I call to you, and I, and I ask God that you would come answer me, and I'm going to stay, hold you at your word that says you will answer me. So come on, as they sing, I'm going to invite everyone else to stand. Let's lift our hands. And let's call unto the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on. Call on the Lord. Call on the Lord right now.
right now. Call on the Lord right now. If there's someone that stood around you, I want you to put your hand on them. And I want you to begin to pray for them. Begin to pray, God, would you give them grace? Someone raised their hand, stood up around you. I want you to put your hand on them and begin to say, call on to the Lord in their day of trouble. If you raised, stood up, this is a time to say, God, forgive me for not having faith in you. And God, right now, I put my faith in you, Jesus.
going to give you a job. God is going to bless you with employment. The Lord is going to give you that job that you need. Come on. Sing it and believe it. Oh, I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell You know what? Before we go, we should pray for Pastor Josh and his wife, my granddaughter Sue. Susan, please come up. <clears throat> Pastor Josh, come out. Pastors, come behind them. Philadelphia Tabernacle. Oh, God is with that church. Come on, right up here. The Lord is good. Thank you, Lord, for raising up Josh and Susan. Let your anointing and presence always be with them. Protect them. Open doors that no one can shut. Let them win souls for the glory of Christ. You've only begun the great work you're going to do there, Lord. And we thank you for it. Oh, you are an awesome God. Just lift your hands and praise Him. Everyone, out loud, praise Him out loud in this building. We praise you. For the LeBlanc family, we praise you, Lord. For Wesley, for James for this man of God and his woman of God, his wife, Lord. So supply everything they need. They've been encouraging us. And now we encourage them in the name of the Lord. You will supply. You will make them a big blessing, Lord, as you already have. Now bless the offering as we leave. Bless us as we go home. Give us safe travel. Give us traveling mercies. We praise you. We honor you today. Come on, lift up your hand one more time. Sing. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. give God one loud standing ovation. Gloria tu nombre, Señor. Have you been blessed tonight? Amen. What a good word God gave us.
turn around and hug someone, give someone a greeting. Some of you want to say hello to Pastor Josh and Susan.